Ça va Ça va bien, et toi <rire> Très bien, merci. <rire> Did you write that down Non. Ok. Um, nice huh? Nice info. Oh, thank you. So, can you introduce yourself? What's your name so My name is Lomi. I'm French. Mm. I've been living in London for two years. For almost two years. Ok. Traveling a lot in between, but yeah. That's Tra what I'm based. Traveling. Uh, can you tell us what do you do? I do modeling. Modeling is my main focus. And I do restaurant. I'm a waitress in a cocktail bar. Yeah. In South Kensington. Yeah. And I'm soon going to be a juice as well. Healthy at the more. moment. No, I am. Okay. Sorry. That was the warm up, you know. That's, those aren't the questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Give me the first three things that come to mind when you think of yourself. When I think of myself, I would say loyal, um, ambitious, <laughs> and fun. Okay. Um, give me the first three things that come to mind when you think of Jamaica. From Jamaica, I would say landscape. I would say uh, music. Landscape, music, and food. Yes. Okay, and yourself was loyal, ambitious, and. I think Jimmy can start as well. Can I, can I add one? No, no, only <laughs> three, only three. <laughs> Give me the first three things that come to mind when you think of the 70s. 70s music? Yeah. What type of music? Or who? You're gonna, you're gonna ask me tricky questions now. I've got no idea. It's okay if you if you miss a bit. It's like you know, we'll give you that error. If I, if I do no, 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 no. Um, was Bob Marley in the eighties? Hey, gold like, star, gold star. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, one. So your next two things. Uh, next two things. Uh, 2070s. Um, fashion. Fashion, uh, how would it look? What 70s fashion look like? Uh, 70s was with the like, you know, all the colorful kind of shit, like afro. Okay. Isn't it? Uh, I'm like, am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Okay. I hope so. I'm gonna double check if it's wrong. I don't want to. Okay, Bob Marley, fashion, um, fashion, fashion and. Afro, and like, uh, Black Power, basically. And Black Power. Yeah. Okay. Listen. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> check, check, check. Yeah, we're live. So, um, vlog 15. Yeah, Laurie, Laurie and I. Vlog 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, vlog 15. Laurie and I went to go and see Yardi. Um,. Yeah, we want to go see Yadi. It's a new Idris Elba film. If you know Idris Elba or if you want to remember him, you can think about Luther. Uh, he, that was one of his series on BBC. Very popular. Funny thing is, I've never actually seen it myself. It's on the list. Yeah, people uh, people um, recommend it to me, but not a lot. I guess maybe that's why I haven't seen it. Um... He's also, I can't remember his name, but he's in Thor. He's the gatekeeper. Um, Yeah, I'm not even going to, no spoilers. So I'm just going to say that he's in Thor, yeah. So on to Yardi, let's see. Going into the film, um, after seeing the trailers, I was, I was interested, especially for, for two reasons. First of all, you know, the first thing I saw was the name of the film Yardi and from the trailer it looked pretty good. Look um decent quality. And then I saw that Idris Elba was the director, so I like him as an actor. And I I I was thinking that from the films he's been in he'd 
make a good film so yeah and i don't really know about his background i don't know if he's jamaican i don't know if he's african or you know um so it was interesting to i was looking forward to seeing what the film would be like what type of film he put together so into more like the specifics of the film by the way i'll try to make this as spoiler free as possible um first off scenery the film was set in downtown kingston's well part of the film was set in downtown kingston so um i don't remember they had uh opening scene around grand market maybe um yeah the it was showing the Jamaican culture well. Um, just look exactly what Jamaica looked like, really. But I guess just in the 1970s, especially that era, doesn't look a lot different from from the 1970s compared to now. So that was good to see, you know, the people about. Um, people are sell them thing, this and that. Um, what else? Uh, it was... The film also took us to London in the 70s. Uh, I don't remember which area, but, you know, it looked pretty familiar. Well, <laughs> resemble where you'd find Jamaicans in London on a whole at that time anyway. And now, majority. It was like, uh, um, I think they were, were they in Brixton or something like that. But, you know, they went in like some ends. Some ends at some like basement nightclub thing. Uh, you know, those are about in London. If you know London, then you know, <laughs> I guess, anywhere of a city, really. Um, where else? Let's see, they saw some council flats, um, estates, showed a couple of estates. Um, what else did they show? What else did they show? Showed a market in london that was cool yeah look pretty much what you'd expect so i'm picking on these things just to focus on like the accuracy of the film so so far if you're listening f- f- um and you've not seen the film i say that scenery scenery rise is very accurate accurate uh also i want to talk about the actors um the main actor let me get his name the main actor the main actor the main actor main character mr i hope that's an l amil amin part of the reason i wanted to see this film is because this suit is a man i know from like several uk films british film let's see he was trevor in kidhood a next big uk show um, he was also Lewis Hardy in The Bill. That's like a British show about police. Um, hopefully, I'll try to throw a, a pick in here so you can see that. He was also... Um, he's been on net, in a Netflix show called Sense8. I haven't seen it, but I think I've probably seen a thumbnail somewhere. And he was also Albie in The Maze Runner. Maze Robber, Runner, um, popular recent franchise. Yeah, so he's a good actor. Um, been in you know a uh, credible film so yeah he done very well man he gave a good mix of um the character's personality and uh as the movie goes through time there's like uh, he shows he really shows how the person his character developed into um himself at that certain point in time so there are scenes when the when the main character is young like i don't know like 10 11 and then you have him in his teens and you have him uh i get a bit early adulthood uh yeah there's also another actor i actually saw in the film i didn't see him i don't remember seeing him in any of the trailers um, but he was in the film. I was surprised. Uh, I'm not gonna say exactly who he was, but he played a, a character. He had a role in the film, definitely. Um, you know, as as he is who he is, Mr. T Boy, Tolupe Ogumefun, my bro. So if I mash up your name, but the man used to say, "Don't jealous me, man." I remember seeing this guy in like in in secondary school, and when you come out with this don't jealous meeting and 
his little African, African, what do you call it, niche jokes and that. He was cool, man. So, so to see him in a film like this now, this is like 10, 15 years down the line, it's good, man. You know that people who put in the work and basically make people remember them, remember the work, they, they, they're building a good foundation for themselves, man. So years ago when I was seeing him as like one of the first viral comedians on like phone and social media and clips and these things, He's now up there in one of the biggest films um, coming out of the UK, especially for black people, man. Definitely. Um, Mr. Don't Jealous Me, T-Boy. Uh, what else are we talking about in this film? Yeah, the Jamaican culture. Yardy. 1970s. So, like Laurie said, Jamaica, when you think of Jamaica, music might come to mind, food might come to mind, landscape might come to mind. And in this film, I feel like it is oh, but he really got the music part down a lot, especially with the song clash system. You had song clash happening in the um in 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 the movie. I wanna call them a DJ at that time as the MC, but I guess in those days you can call it them and they are toast. Um and I chat them thing on the rhythm. You know, the rhythms are really, really, really good. Um after this, I'm going to go on to the track list for the film. It was very good. Uh, so, yeah, the sound clash system was very big, man. It, it it really showed it well, especially the scenes, how they were shot. Um, the nighttime shots and the underground club shots. Or just the people enjoying themselves. Yeah, really, really good directing. Directing. Um, what else can I say? Tracklist. You know, let's go straight onto the tracklist right now. <laughs> Um. Okay, so Yardy, the official soundtrack. I'm here looking on um, Amazon. Uh, track one, Kingston Town by Lord Creator. I don't know the artist or the song. Track two, Zungu Zungu Zeng, Yellow Man. Big, big, big rhythm, legendary song. Yellow Man, one of the biggest thing com- to come out of Jamaica artists black white chinese regardless of what he is one of the biggest things to come out of jamaica especially for music um we have guess who's coming to dinner by black uhuru next legendary band i think reggae band reggae group whatever you want to call them i think is it michael rose that came from black uhuru or i think it's michael rose yeah or gene Reed. You have My Jamaican Guy by Grace Jones. Grace Jones, the next big singer, but, you know, <coughs> sorry to say I don't have a big collection of her music, so I can't say much on her, her music. You have Work To Do by the Isley Brothers, not track number five. Another big group, um, music around that era. Uh, I don't know that particular song, but I am a fan of some of their other music. You have Holy Mount Zion by Culture. I don't know the song of the artist. Dedication to Dean Frazier and Nambo by The Roots Radix. And that's track seven. Uh, not sure about that. Let's move on to the ones I know. Revolution by Dennis Brown. The next legend, king, prince, anything you want to call him of reggae. Real, um, real big time rebel man. Uh, we have the Ab- Abyssinians, track 10. The name of the song is Sata Amasa Ghana. Uh, you know, I'm going to turn this thing a bit, so I'm sorry. You have Marcus Garvey, the t- song title, track 13, by Burning Spear. Big up, big up, big Burning Spear. And next big legendary music group, reggae music group. And you have... Johnny was by Skip Marley, and this is amazing, man, because that's like Bob Marley's, I think, grandson, grandson, yeah, and he's here on one of the films that's representing his culture, his father's culture in a big, big way, man. Uh, but yeah, if you if you want to get into reggae music, I guess you should go check out the this album. I will put a link in my bio, I guess, and see what's up. Um, so yeah, we've gone through the scenery of Yard, we've gone through the soundtrack and a few of the actors. Let's see the plot without going into the plot too much. 
uh if you've seen the trailers i guess you can see it's uh talking about jamaica in the 70s and you know life on both sides of the water so that's in jamaica and london um 1970s they, they would probably would have been the second generation after the wind rush, wind rush generation so they still would have been early into the uk and still experiencing racism the film does give you a little uh a little insight into racial racial um systems at the time but yeah man overall it's a very very good film uh no criticisms Especially, well, I want to say for reviews, for myself in particular, when it comes to original pieces of work, it's, I don't really criticize them in a negative way much because they're the first. Well, when something's the first, it hasn't doesn't really have a, a reference like that. And this film, I'd say the closest thing to it I know would probably be Shutters, which is 10 years ago, but then again, it's still a modern, a way more modern setting than in the 1970s this film yardy so there's nothing else really to bounce it back against um well i did see the kkk clansman recently and i think that was in the set in the 70s and they both uh have their similarities you definitely you definitely can see the cultural differences between kkk clansman if that's what you said how you say the name of the film and 1970s america 1970s london and jamaica where you can see the similarities and the differences so i say they were both you could definitely both do it in the same generation same time span uh, and and overall out of i don't know if i'm going to do a five star system or 10 out of 10 system for when i'm doing reviews film reviews if it was out of 10 i'd give this film an 8 out of 10 i'd only say no of a 2 because i'd give a film probably 9 or 10 out of 10 if it was better than the first 8 out of 10 for me is still like a good it's basically a perfect film so i'm not if i could give something an 8 out of 10 i'm not saying it's missing two marks i'm just saying it got all eight marks and a two would only be the next level so actually i could probably see a part two coming to this there's not a big setup for it but if there was a part two i can i think the characters hold enough ground or are strong enough to continue in and the directing skills are strong enough to continue to expand this yardy world as what well, anime fans will say this yardy universe or marvel dc whatever this yardy universe so yeah good film um eight out of ten if it was stars i'd say four stars it is over well done um everyone should check out my friend lodi at the beginning of the video check out her page um she's an amazing model uh she'll come host for you promoters uh event management managers get in contact with her photographers link on the instagram or socials are there and yeah one love go watch the yardy support it just oh man the black people think is it